former player, Micah Richards, is with us too. We'll be back in just a minute. Stay with us. On that goal, it hasn't necessarily been easy for them to create opportunity, though, Jake. No, we spoke before the game. How would they approach the game? Would they press high or would they play deep? They play deep, and when you play deep to try and score a goal, you have to try and counter attack. But they don't really have the pace to really trouble Manchester United on the counter attack. And we have a couple of clips of that here. So. We see them really deep. Manchester United is having the majority of possession, but when they look to break and counter, as teams do when they play deep, they don't have the numbers at the top end of the pitch and they don't have the, maybe the ability or the pace, really, and it's very easy for Manchester United, Rafa. Yeah, when you know that your team cannot play a counter-attack, then you have to rely on set pieces. That is crucial, and I think Villarreal has done really well. So we have a corner that you can see a movement, the back post, then it's a chance, or half chance if you want, but at least it's something. And, and again, another one that they have a, a shot from outside the box. So you could see that they have been working on that. And now the set pieces, so he has, again, a free kick. They, they attack the, the ball with determination. But just look at Lindelof here. He's, he's no awareness. He's, if he's going to go, they've got to get back in quicker. By the time he sees him, it's too late. He's got no presence, no authority as a centre-back. And that's why they, they go into the, the game one behind. It's just not been good enough for Man United at all, okay. Yeah, Villarreal now just 45 minutes away from winning their first ever major trophy. We'll be back with you in just a second. Villarreal, of course, coming into this as major one in this game so far. What is it, Micah? Moreno! <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Coasted like a thief in the night. Absolute scintillating finish, Jamie. This guy is 45 minutes away from being the biggest legend in Villarreal history. <laughs> Hang on, boys. <laughs> Something else that would be legendary, um, and, you know, speaking of unmissable moments, I think it, it's worth bringing up here. Uh, Jamie Carragher, in the pregame, made a certain promise of what he would do if Villarreal was <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, what else I'll do. I'll put this on now, but you know if United get beat, I'll wear this on my birthday suit. If you wear your birthday suit, I'm, going, I'm never coming in ever again. <laughs> what are you planning that for? Whoever wants to see it. <laughs> Whoever can see it. Oh, my God. <laughs> that is our first oh, time. You can unmissable God. moment. We'll be back in just a second. Don't worry. Well, well I, I think it looks like Villa is going to play that way. And Manchester United so far have no answer. They've not created a single chance. That's disappointing, having played four really, really attacking-minded players. Uh, so, very disappointing first half for Manchester United. You said throughout that first half, Villarreal needs to score, we'll get a game. But we're not getting it, it's just defending, defending. Well, it's tight now. Now we have a game. <laughs> well, I hope so. Uh, so do we. Uh, I'll tell you what else I hope is that during the second half, you may pay a little bit more attention because uh, we were spying on you over here. Uh, Peter Schmeichel, Man United legend. I thought you'd be dialed in. I thought you'd be focused. No, you're taking selfies. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that? That's that's the Naiborai. The Naiborai. The perks of being on site. <laughs> She's a, a big presenter <laughs> on Spanish television. A big a big friend of mine. Are you saying in the owner, the chairman? Because uh, we will say can't do anything wrong in his shoes that he can only be the hero but I think David De Gea not even for the penalty miss the fact that so many goals are scored on the penalties and I think there's a stat that he's not saved a penalty in his last 35 penalties against them which is unbelievable I mean it was a big talking point before the game wasn't it the, who were going to be the starting keepers for either side as well both for VRL and for Manchester United does will it now be questioned whether Ole Gunnar Solskjaer made the right call putting David De Gea in? I, I, th I think most Manchester United supporters would still believe David De Gea was better than Henderson. I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer gave him sort of 10, 15 games and almost got to the end of the season and said, I'm going to go with De Gea for these last few games. And I think most Man United fans wouldn't have questioned that. But the bigger question is, do Manchester United need a new goalkeeper? And I don't think the evidence tonight, yes, in penalties, but he didn't cover himself in glory with uh, you know, his attempts at maybe making some saves at times. So let's then look at, at that penalty, which would be the decisive penalty in this game. Did he look anxious to you stepping up, Rafa? Yeah, a little bit, but um, it's, what do you expect you know, at this time <coughs> from a keeper? So you are not 
expecting that the keeper will be calm and then the last uh, penalty may be in a final that uh, I think we can say that I think he's a great keeper but maybe he was not as confident in the last months that he was in the past for any reason but uh, it's a difficult situation for him he's nearly leaving and then he has to take a penalty so in a final I don't think that is easy for him and I would say he's a great keeper for me he's a fantastic keeper but uh, he has to have some confidence to do well you see the scenes there the actual joy but obviously you've got to think of Manchester United support as well and how they'll be feeling but I always feel that when you're doing the job that we do we've got our allegiances to our teams but when you're the presenter of a show <laughs> I'm sure you have to be impartial not show no emotion whether that's in victory or defeat and there was something that we saw She's crying. No, I wasn't crying. Let's Own not go on. presenter. Mm -hmm. I think there's a, she shed a tear. From hero to zero. <laughs> she can't believe it. Oh, I can't even be used it. to it. Does no, that hurt, Kate? Does that hurt? Oh, stop. <laughs> uh. <laughs> at least you will not have problems at home. So they will see that you feel something. Who's got so. problems at home? Oh, at you least. Might have <laughs> <laughs> Where's Pops? Is he crying as well? Uh, my, yeah, my dad will be gutted tonight. He definitely oh. will be. But my mum is a Liverpool fan and somewhere she'll be gloating just the same as she <laughs> yeah. She'll be enjoying herself. Did you feel for him there, David De Gea? You no, can't help I, I, but I feel was for him, can you? For him. I mean, you can win and lose in game, but you don't want to... I, you know, I can't laugh at De Gea because... You, I, you one, just one, said, I've from been, hero to zero. I know, yeah, but that was off camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to be impartial, Jamie. <laughs> and it's never nice to see someone go out with, with a penalty shootout like that. You think you're the last one to take one, the keepers. Come down to the keepers. And he just didn't have the bottle in the end to do it. And, I, yeah, I did feel sorry for him. Well, you said it, it came down to the keeper, so let's talk to a keeper. Let's talk to Peter Schmeichel, who's out there. Uh, Mikey, you just said you didn't have the bottle to do it in the end. Peter, is that how you saw it? Not really. It, it, to, to be fair, that it wasn't really a bad penalty. It was a really, really good save uh, in the end. So, and it was the first time any of the goalkeepers were anywhere near any of those quality uh, penalties. But I think you are a little bit too harsh on the hair. Um, I've heard, you know, things like didn't cover himself in glory. I don't know what he should have done today in order to it, it, it to have impressed you guys. Um, I don't think this is a bad penalty, to be honest. I think that is a really, really good save. How did you feel he had performed when he was in the net, Peter? Did you feel like that was a good performance? I this one. Well, I, I think that David De Gea has lost a lot of confidence um, in, in the last sort of 18 months, for, for whatever reasons. I, didn't, I don't think the... Um, uh, the whole Henderson situation that he came in has helped either the goalkeepers because first sign of any kind of insecurity, you know, that goalkeeper knew he was going to go out of the team. We saw Henderson against Liverpool not covering himself in glory in that game. And I think De Gea is... I think Oli maybe in, this, in deciding that rotating the goalkeepers has created a problem for himself. Uh, but I don't think that had any influence on the result today. I thought the uh, Villarreal penalties were quality and of the, on the highest shelf. I don't think something that you touched on earlier on in, in, in your talks, I don't think a lot of the big players of Manchester United turned up today. It was only really Cavani and Fernandes that was trying everything they could. There's a lot of big players there that needs to have a serious look at their performance today. Um, and they, I mean, they, they are the players that I'm mostly disappointed with today. Was it hunger? What did you think was lacking, Peter? I mean, you talked about all his tactics. I don't think it was tactics. At, at the end of the day, it comes down to the players. Players are going on the pitch with a job to do, and a lot of the players today didn't do that. A certain players, Pogba was one of them. I'm, I'm, I'm with Guillaume. I'm, say, I'm saying to, to Guillaume also, look at Pogba, he's hiding. He's supposed to drive the game. I would very, very much like to see Fred come on, so, so to induce some kind of energy, but it's kind of dead. We've been talking for a few weeks about Marcus Rashford, what, what is up with him. 
He looks like he doesn't want to play. He looks very, very unhappy, very unsettled. And today was another game where he didn't really do, he didn't do much. He missed that massive chance that might, I don't know, it might have been offside anyway, but he missed that massive chance that could have taken it to 2-1. Uh, and these are the moments where you need your big, big players to step up. And they did. It was, as I said, Cavani and Fernandes are the only two players who can come out of this game with a little bit of, uh, of honour. United were obviously without their captain, weren't they, Harry Maguire? Do you look back at this game now and think that his presence, his leadership was really missed in that match? I, I think so, but you're never any better than the players that you have available. So you, you can't just have one great centre-half, one great leader. If you're Manchester United chasing trophies, you know, you're talking about challenging for the Premier League crown next year, you've got to have more than one. You can't have one injury and then the whole system breaks down. Uh, I have to say the Man United's defence, they were all right today, but it wasn't, it wasn't great. It wasn't like, I mean, Harry Maguire would be a player that would take the ball forward. If, if, if we need an extra man in our attacking play, he would do that. But he would also talk to the other players. He would get Pogba into the right position, for instance. And that was lacking today. That wasn't there today at all. All right, Peter, really interesting to hear your thoughts. We'll be back with you in just a minute. Thank you very much. Uh, let's take a look and see uh, what the reaction is in Manchester. Um, because you can only imagine it's... Oh. <laughs> Very funny, everybody. Rally they told rise, me dejected. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's hard to tame. <laughs> the tears of a clown. The oh, God. Give me strength. Oh, uh, look at everybody. We'll be back it's in like minute. she's in a film. Pull myself together. It's like she's in Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> look at it. I'm honest. Back years, 2014, 2015, 2016, he took Arsenal all the way to the final, fell short to Chelsea in 2019, and now with Villarreal, perhaps the most surprising win of all of them, given the budget of the team, the size of the team, the players on the roster. What an achievement this is, and, and just really speaks to his quality. Jamie, I know this is something you've been talking about all night, but it'd be interesting to hear your thoughts as well. Uh, what does this say about Unai Emery, this win? The, an interesting thing now is just that he's winning with different teams. Obviously, talking in Spanish, that is something that I said before, it's very difficult to go to another country and then keep winning. But uh, he's winning with different teams, and that is uh, a great achievement because it's not the same. Sevilla, you say, oh, great, but you have the team, everybody knows what you have to do, what you want to do, and then you carry on with them. But when you talk about a new team, and three, four years later, and a team like Villarreal that is not so big, it's a great achievement. So it means that... Well, we know about Unai. He's uh, someone that he works hard, he keeps the teams uh, organised. And then I will say something that is experience, organisation and hard work. That is the key when you want to win trophies. You can play nice football. We could see playing from the back, giving the ball away. Playing from the back, giving the ball away. So if you want to win trophies, you need this experience or you need good players for sure. But the good organisation and hard work, that is uh, what he has do you, done here. Do you think it's extra special with winning it with Villarreal? If you look at the Seville team's hard work, had some real talented players. This was more of a hard-working performance? Yeah, Sevilla, the city, the team, is, uh, is a, they have been there and they were close to the top. Villarreal has been there because, I said before, they are very well organised. Sevilla is a top side in Spain. No, it's not Madrid, Barcelona or Atletic Madrid at the moment, but it's a top side in, in Spain, like it was Valencia before. Villarreal, obviously, no, they are getting better. Then winning with Sevilla, good players, <coughs> good atmosphere, that is also something special. Then it was easier, that is quite difficult, but it was easier than winning with Villarreal, obviously. So, obviously, we're talking about the manager now, and I just want to flip it to, to the, the opposition manager. I said before the game that the only chance Villarreal uh, had was because of the man they had in the dugout compared to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And now, I'm trying to not make that sound disrespectful, but I felt when you talk about tactics or how you set a team up, the difference in the quality of those teams tonight was huge. And we're saying Man United didn't play well. They didn't. But you could still see how much more quality they had. Power, pace, technical ability to keep the ball. Yes, didn't create chances. So for, for Unai Emery to win with that team, because it looked a really... We can talk about organisation, but their actual quality to keep the ball threatened Manchester United. It was really average. Let's be totally honest about this. 
Villarreal have done something amazing, but this is an average team who shouldn't be competing with Manchester United. And when I speak about, we speak about the big players, Peter said the big players didn't turn up. Micah said the same. Yes, I agree. But tonight shows you, never forget, the most important person at a club is a football, is the manager. You have great players and great stars. And Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is at a, a huge club with some fantastic players and they do things and win games. Tonight, he lost the game. And I go back to actually Unai Emery making five substitutions in normal time. Ole hadn't made one by then. Now, he did, there was a plan. He realised he didn't have as good a team. So for Manchester United tonight and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, this is a, a disastrous result. And when I go back to the manager, and I've got Rafa here, and I'm going to blow his own trumpet, we go back to Istanbul. We were nowhere near as good as AC Milan. We made, Rafa made changes at half-time, changed the system, brought Didi and Manon, actually influenced the game. Whereas Oli, I'm not quite sure, is at the level to actually influence the game from the bench, as we saw Unai Emery do tonight. So I think this is a, a disastrous result for Manchester United, but I think this could be a real problem for Oli Gunnar Solskjaer in the coming months. I don't think he's going to get sacked on the back of this. But in a few months' time, if Manchester United are not challenging for the Premier League title, this game and result will get brought up forever and ever. I mean, one of the kind of constants throughout this season has been talking about Manchester United refinding their identity and, and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer being a big part of that, right? And then the, the developments and the progress that we have seen. Do you as a manager look at it and think that that is enough, what we're seeing with Manchester United? Yeah, I said at the beginning of the season in one interview that uh, this year, for me, Chelsea and Manchester United, they have to deliver because they were spending money and they were bringing good players, keeping the manager, whatever. And I think that what we said before, they have very good players. So I think it's, it was an opportunity. I think uh, Solskjaer was talking about that if we win, we can start building from here or something like that. Then in the end, you have a, a team that is well organised and it's not, they don't have too many great players. They have Albiol, that is my friend, and he's a, he's a great lad and a good player. But they don't have too many if you compare with Manchester United. And they, they did well, so they knew exactly what they have to do. We're talking about the half-time set pieces. So for them, counter-attack who can do nothing, then I go with set pieces and I will try to do that. I will reduce the space for Bruno Fernandes or be sure that they cannot link with him, that he's a key player for them. So they knew exactly what they wanted to do and they did it. All right, listen, we have got so much more still to come. We're going to hear from the man himself in question that we've been talking about, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. He's been speaking after the game. We're very happy and uh, above all because... Uh, we work it uh, hard all the season, and uh, this project is a very important pro project for the president, for the for the owner, for the chairman, and we are very proud of of Villarreal, very proud of of the players, of the chairman, of every every people working in, with us in this club, and I think we deserve to win against the. The favorite, I think, uh, was uh, Manchester United, but we we played very competitive match uh, tonight, and uh, in the in the last minute we went better than then for to to finish with one goal more. But uh, in the penalties, I think <laughs> we we were uh, very excited for this opportunity, and uh, we achieved it. 22 penalties. How was your nerves on oh, the sideline? It's fantastic. Every player has score. <laughs> Fantastic for us. And uh, really, uh, I think uh, the players work it uh, so, 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 so hard this, this year. And tonight, I think, is the sample. You are the first manager to win this tournament four times. What, what is it with the Europa League and Unai Emery? Uh, I think it's to work, to, to feel this competition as a something important and to show and to, to speak with the players for to, to do something important in this competition. The respect for the Europe League, respect for every team, and respect for us, and then to work a lot. And next season, Villarreal is, is back into the Champions League again. Yes, uh, this club plays in Champions League sometimes, and I think uh, we are going to, to enjoy this competition uh, as well with, with Villarreal, with... Uh, every players and, and for me it's very important because I want to win Europe League but uh, I want to, to play Champions League as well.
Well, congratulations to him. Uh, I tell you what, there's also big news coming out in the world of football from Spain this evening. Fabrizio Romano, our Italian insider, uh, and just in all-round football insider, broke this one. Fabrizio, what's the big news? It was a big one, yes, I'm happy. It <laughs> was really complicated, but it's 100% confirmed. Zidane is leaving Real Madrid, he's out, and he communicated to the team, to the players and to the board. He's going to leave Real Madrid, and so they're going with a new manager in the next few hours. But Zidane has decided to leave Real Madrid, 100% confirmed. Just to be clear, you're happy that you broke it, not that he's gone? And there's another, there's a club in Italy as well that's lost their manager this evening. Yes, Inter, because Antonio Conte decided to part ways with Inter. Uh, they were not on the same point about the future of the club, you know, because they were talking about projects. But Inter need to sell players and Conte wanted new players. So they had this kind of problem and Conte decided to part ways with Inter. So they are looking also for a new manager. All right, wonderful. Fabrizio, always good to see you. Thank you very much. Good to see you. We will see you again very soon, hopefully. Uh, it's, I'd love to say it's been a, an enjoyable evening with you too. Rafa? It's been an enjoyable evening with you. <laughs> you two were pains in my behind, but it's always good to be with you all the same. Uh, Saturday, we'll be back for the Champions League final. We will. And hopefully we'll see you again soon. Rafa, thank you very much. Appreciate Listen. it. Listen.